this week's episode of Transit, we take another look at how the world moves around us. We'll see a pregnant crash test dummy, drive to the top of the road and go racing without drivers. All this as we bring you the future today. There's gridlock on the roads of India. No one's moving anywhere very fast and exhaust fumes are choking the atmosphere. In an effort to combat pollution, the Indian government is promoting more environment-friendly technology, like the latest electric car. The Riva NXG is a two-seater roadster with a top speed of 120 kilometres an hour and a range of 200 kilometres per charge. The government has announced a subsidy of 75,000 rupees, around $1,700, on every Riva car purchased. It was designed with stylish young consumers in mind. The response that we have got thus far is that um, it's un unbelievably good. I mean, the way the car looks, it 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 arouses that passion to own a car. And that's that's really what I was called upon to do. You know, you must want to own it. Ruxin Bose bought a Riva car two years ago because she was concerned about the effects of India's millions of old and poorly maintained cars on the environment. Since then, she's come to appreciate the convenience of such a compact car, which gives her enormous manoeuvrability on Delhi's crowded roads. Plus, there are financial rewards. Economically, it's as cheap as taking a bus. Once you've, pay, once you've paid off the actual cost of the car, um, it's uh, from 200 to 500 rupees a month is how much you actually spend on the car. It's um, 40 paisa per kilometre. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, there's hardly any maintenance because there's no engine, there's no clutch, there's no gear. It's, there's nothing to be done. The Reva runs on a rechargeable battery, which costs between $5 and $10 per month to run. In comparison, a petrol car in India costs between $100 and $500 a month. Other governments around the world concerned about air pollution are also supportive of electric cars. The Japanese government has announced a subsidy of $2,600 per car. The UK government offers £1,000, plus a waiver of parking charges and road taxes. The NXG uses sodium nickel chloride batteries, feeding a 37 kilowatt motor that drives the front wheels. Over 200 cars have already been sold in London alone, despite zero advertising. SEMA is the premier automotive specialty product show. Las Vegas hosted some of the industry's brightest minds and hottest products, and the show attracts more than 100,000 industry leaders from over 100 countries. SEMA is a specialty equipment manufacturers association. That's what it stands for. The, the, the show's been around for a number of years, and it really is a place for people to showcase all the aftermarket kind of equipment. SEMA expected to draw over 50,000 attendees to its 2 million square feet of exhibits. Manufacturers of sound systems, performance parts, body kits and customising equipment strutted their stuff. This is where you're going to see every product, every showcase of anything from wheels, tyres, anything you can put on a vehicle after it's purchased. And for those of us that are car guys and car girls, uh, this is the place to be. I mean, you're going to see it all. Automotive technology is growing at a rate faster than ever seen before. From hydrogen-powered roadsters to military vehicles equipped with anti-terrorist gadgets, manufacturers race to bring the best and latest to cashed-up buyers. We didn't want to just make a cool car or cool truck for the SEMA show this year. Our project team wanted to come up with some sort of theme, give them some kind of motivation to build it. The show is divided in 12 sections, each showcasing a variety of new features. There are also educational seminars, product demonstrations and networking opportunities. One of the most exciting exhibits was the US military's new anti-terrorism vehicle, Smart Truck. Smart Truck is a um, US Army program in which we were trying to find commercially based um, automotive technologies that would have dual use capabilities. The vehicle is designed to be the next wave in military technology. Aside from the top-mounted machine gun, most of the weaponry on the vehicle is non-lethal. 
We have a perimeter defense system that's capable of administering pepper spray as well as smoke obscurant. We have um, the F-Class systems, which is a RPG interceptor type of technology based off of um, acoustic technology. This year boasted over 1,100 new products and innovations. The car industry is entering a stage of advancement formerly existing only in science fiction, and SEMA is the leading place to witness some of the most exciting developments in automotive technology. Car safety systems are developed using sophisticated crash test dummies. But what about risks to pregnant women? Volvo has developed a computer model of a pregnant crash test dummy called Linda. Her purposes for us are, number one, to understand what happens to a pregnant woman and her baby during a crash and how they both interact with the safety systems in the car during a crash. Uh, so far, Linda has been used to test uh, the correct placement recommendations uh, of the seatbelt and the results have shown us uh, that recommendations are best. Uh, additionally, our hope is that in the future, uh, Linda or models like Linda uh, will be used for setting the world's first safety requirements for the development of future cars. Today, many pregnant women wonder whether the safety belt could harm their unborn baby if they are involved in a car crash. However, all researchers agree on recommending that they should always wear their safety belt. Well, I think the, the most important thing to remember is that we know so little about what happens to pregnant women in car accidents. Uh, the information that is available today comes mainly from the United States. And there, there are indications that more women actually die in traffic accidents than during complications associated with pregnancy in hospitals. So this is obviously something that is important for us to study closer. Car crashes, uh, potentially, can pose a danger to the baby at all stages of pregnancy. Uh, it's extremely important uh, that the mother protect herself in the best way uh, with the seat belt, for example, because her safety is the first imperative for the babies. Linda is a finite element method computer model. Her lower torso, abdomen and upper thigh areas represent the human body with human-like tissue and even includes a virtual 36-week-old baby called Kira. It's very important that the belt always lay over the shoulder and between the breasts and to the side of the pregnant belly. And very, very important also is that the lat belt is as low as possible under the belly and laying over the pelvic bones. The computer model makes it possible to study in great detail how the belt moves, the influence of the belt, airbag and steering wheel on the mother and baby, and how the baby moves in relation to the mother's body. The model can also be used to test new designs for safety belts and other safety systems. Researchers are finding out more and more about the risks of crashing while pregnant. Well, first of all, we'd like to find out how common it is in our own country of Sweden, but also we would like to find out which uh, injuries the pregnant women sustain during car accidents. Uh, the information available at the moment indicates that it is mostly to do with placenta uh, uh, loosening during uh, the trauma of a traffic accident and also premature contractions, which can lead to to the baby being delivered too early. This is a supposedly bulletproof car. Despite $260,000 worth of armour plating, it didn't survive a machine gun attack in Baghdad. Hollywood doesn't show the hurt, the, the scarring, the, you know, the damage that it does beyond. Um, we're there to offer somebody protection because of, they're in fear. But also we're in fear and we face that threat every time. Toughened glass is tested at a West of England ballistics laboratory. Chris's experience is confirmed by experiments showing that even yeah, armoured okay. non-military vehicles are no match for sustained gunfire. But now, after months of simulated tests, security experts have come up with a car that can defend itself against attack from gunmen least for a while. Throughout the night you're mortared, during the day you can be shot at 
car bombs, IEDs, suicide bombers. After months of testing, a British company has developed a $10,000 system which equips a car to defend itself. Underneath the vehicle, you would typically have this pyrotechnic device fitted. Uh, it comes in three different types, uh, smoke and flashbang, very loud bang and very bright flash, uh, and indeed airburst. The bang packs twice the decibels of a standard army issue stun grenade. Chris Finningley's days as a bodyguard are over, but he says the mechanism might have saved him from being shot in the shoulder. One more year, Lord. Families across the United States celebrated the Thanksgiving holiday with a traditional turkey dinner. And these days, roasting a Thanksgiving turkey in oil has become as much of a tradition as stuffing and cranberry sauce. But if it's poured down a sink, the oil solidifies and blocks drains, resulting in problems in the city's drainage and sewer systems. And while experts at the United Nations Climate Control Conference brainstormed on ways to slow the effects of greenhouse gases and global warming, a town in Texas has found a seasonal method to cut carbon emissions from cars. City officials in Plano are encouraging residents to turn those gallons of used turkey oil over to be recycled into biodiesel fuel. Well, the purpose of doing this is to keep it out of our uh, storm waterways, just to keep our waterways clean. Uh, grease is often, people often don't know how to dispose of it. And so um, the simple thing to do is sometimes to just pour it down your storm drain or maybe even your kitchen sink, and that causes a lot of um, storm water issues, a lot of sewer system issues. Biodiesel Industries picks up the oil and converts it to biofuel, a cleaner burning fuel created from vegetable and animal oil. It runs in diesel cars with little or no modifications needed to the engine. Biodiesel substantially reduces air pollution and is non-toxic and biodegradable. This cleaner fuel significantly improves air quality. That means your traditional turkey dinner will have a lasting impact long after the season is over. Twenty-three robotic vehicles designed to operate without human guidance set off just after sunrise to navigate their way through a desert obstacle course in a US military-sponsored race. Modified Humvees, SUVs, pickup trucks and dune buggies were required to navigate through hills, valleys, dry lake beds and man-made obstacles over 210 kilometres to win a $2 million prize being offered by the Pentagon. The Defence Advanced Research Projects Agency, better known as DARPA, is hoping to spur the development of driverless vehicles that one day could carry supplies for the US military in war zones. The rugged, twisting course, located about 60 kilometres southwest of Las Vegas on the Nevada-California border, was chosen because of its similarity to the places where the US military is currently most active. At times, the driverless vehicles will also have to cross over railroad tracks and squeeze through narrow passes. The vehicles, kicking up a cloud of dust, left the starting gate one by one every five minutes, passed a crowd of about 2,000 spectators and headed off into the Nevada desert. Last year in the inaugural race sponsored by DARPA, called the Grand Challenge, every machine failed within sight of the starting line. Using global positioning satellites and inertial navigation, the vehicles are programmed to follow a predefined course, disclosed only hours before the race. Radars, lasers and cameras send data to onboard computers that steer the vehicles around obstacles. Organisers limited the race to 10 hours. The Stanford Racing Team, a team from Stanford University, eventually won the event and collected the $2 million first prize. Using a modified Volkswagen Tourag diesel called Stanley, the team completed the course in 6 hours and 54 minutes at an average of 30 kilometres an hour. Two other teams were close behind, each 10 minutes adrift, while a fourth, using a modified Mack truck, finished but outside the 10-hour cut-off limit. While the vehicle is in motion, its environment is seen through four laser rangefinders, a radar system, a stereo camera pair and a monocular vision system. All processing takes place on board on seven Pentium M computers powered by a battery-packed electronically controlled power system. 
The vehicle uses measurements from its GPS, a 6DOF inertial measurement unit and wheel speed sensors to determine where it is. Stanley is activated via a drive-by-wire system developed by Volkswagen's America's Electronic Research Lab. By hosting the event, the US military is aiming for a third of its vehicles to be unmanned by 2015. Now to another Touareg, and eight Germans set out to climb to a record altitude above sea level. The adventurers ascending the north face of Hoyas del Salado, the highest volcano on Earth, which rises to 6,882 metres in Chile. OK, right now we are at 5,980 metres, which is of course not enough for us in order to achieve our goals, but I think we will get much higher. Their mission was to install a seismographic station provided by the Geological Research Centre of Potsdam in Berlin. Powered by solar energy, the research centre will register every ground motion over a period of nine months. Chile is located in a region which is hit most frequently by earthquakes. Clearly the assault wasn't an easy drive in the park and some winching was required, sometimes more successful than others. In addition to their scientific mission, for each metre of altitude achieved, the expedition team donated half a euro to the SOS Children's Village in Santiago de Chile. The Touareg expedition is a special model, which was launched in Germany at the end of last year. It comes with a 3.2-litre V6 direct injection engine, and about 350 will be produced annually. For the journey, Volkswagen added a 3.5-tonne worn cable winch and a full-length 8-millimetre thick underbody aluminium skid plate, a roof rack and a differential lock on the rear axle. From 5,000 metres on, the team used a new type of oxygen supply system. The four kilogram piece of equipment enabled the team to avoid dangerous altitude sickness by breathing oxygen for over 10 hours a day. A new world record of 6,081 metres was set within the guidelines of the Guinness Book of Records and the Guinness Committee have acknowledged the achievement. This driverless car may represent the future of urban light transport. The ultra-personal rapid transport system is billed as a new and innovative way of moving people around airports, towns and even shopping malls. These electric driverless taxis eliminate the need to wait for a train or take an additional bus. The cars arrive on demand and carry passengers to their individually selected destination. The number of people travelling by air is expected to increase to 475 million a year in the UK alone by 2030. While new airport terminals and runways are springing up to prepare for future demand, moving passengers around today's vast modern airports has become an issue. London's Heathrow, one of the world's busiest airports, plans to install a new driverless taxi service that minimises transportation time for passengers while being more eco-friendly. A family of four with luggage can disembark from the plane and be transported at up to 40 kilometres per hour to another terminal, on a track that is half the size of the average single road lane. The big advantage is uh, uh, convenience. Uh, they get a system which is, according to our, our calculations, will be 60% faster uh, than the current buses, 60% less trip time. And of course, it's going to be much more comfortable, it's going to be available for you when you want it. Uh, so it's already got everything going for it for the passenger. But for passengers, the real benefit is the car's efficiency. The manufacturers, Advanced Passenger Transport, say the Ultra system is most efficient within an eight kilometre radius, although the cars can travel further. A central computer system controls each network of Ultra taxis, constantly checking safety and efficiency measures. Each car has its own individual onboard computer linked with a monitoring system that aims to diagnose weaknesses in a vehicle before they occur. Sensors at the front and rear of the vehicle keep the car on track. Well, each, each of the vehicle has got a computer inside it uh, to control it and also got uh, laser sensors on each side of the vehicle which measure di the distance from, uh, from the vehicle to the curb. Plus, there's also a central controller, which is a big computer that will detect um, 
where the vehicle sits uh, on, the, on, the, on the network. The Ultra system has been in development since 1995, but only recently have the computers and software become sophisticated enough to run the system to the reliability required by airports. Well, the system's run by computers, and obviously computer technology's gone a long way these days. By getting rid of the driver, we've actually got rid of the least safe part of the system. Then we protect ourselves against that by a whole series of processes so that the system will actually stop if something does go wrong. And the company is looking at future developments in solar power and other technologies to make the system even more eco-friendly. London's Heathrow will be the first airport to install the Ultra system next year. After making a splash nearly four years ago, Segway has launched new models of its curious scooter-like machine. One is called the Segway Cross Transporter, or XT for short. It's designed to go off the beaten track and into the woods. It features large, soft tyres for greater ground clearance and traction, and newly designed software. I've taken it on some, some pretty extreme trails. I'd say just about anywhere an average mountain biker can go, it would go. Um, certainly if you're an extreme mountain biker, you can probably find some places you wouldn't want to take that product. Fire roads are great, trails. Um, National Park uses the product today, the normal HD product line. We think there's an expansion opportunity there. I can see uses in things like agriculture, ecotourism, you name it, on down the line. It's a very eco-friendly product. Uh, no, you know, emissions, no two-stroke kind of noise and, and pollution that comes from that. We think it'll be good in those types of environments. It'll let you leave work early, get around to golf in before it gets dark. For the hardcore golfers that come out first off the tee in the morning, then get the round in, get back home on a Saturday. Um, so really speeding up play is one. The other is, frankly, it's just a lot of fun to ride. I mean, the Segway HD is fun to ride anyway. Imagine combining that with golf. You're kind of doing two leisure things all at one time. It's a blast. Um, as to whether the hype of changing cities in you know, five to ten years, it's very difficult to do. You can't change a city over, over a decade, typically. It takes many decades. And so we don't think we're off our long-term plans, and we have a good short-term business right now. Um, we're kind of happy with the trajectory we're on. Segway uses gyroscopes and computers to mimic human balance. Users lean forward to move forward, lean back to reverse, and in New York's Times Square, it got mixed reviews. I would try one of those on a golf course, definitely, especially if I had... Especially if everybody else on the golf course had one, that would be nice. I feel that we need to get our exercise and we need to do as much on our own as possible instead of getting mechanized. Right now it's a novelty, but I think that this is something that could be very beneficial for a variety of areas of businesses or activities, and I think it would catch on. On you. One year it's trendy and then it's it's out again. And I think it would be the same with that. Trendy or not, the Segway comes with a hefty price tag. The XT is $5,000 and the GT $500 more. But at least you don't get your feet wet. Join us next time as we explore more of the world's technology that's in transit.